Hello everyone, this is Dr. Gerig. This is Labor Economics class and this is Labor Supply Chapter, Chapter 2, Part 13. Let's learn about labor supply curve. So we have been building the model, neoclassical model of labor leisure choice and labor supply curve. So whenever you think about a supply curve, right, and... <clears throat> In goods and services market, you have prices, you have quantities. Supply curve looks something like this, right? Price of a good goes up, quantity supplied goes up. This is quantity supplied, price, and supply curve. So labor supply curve is similar, and it shows the relationship between the wages, not leisure, but hours of optimal hours of work. So the comparative statistic analysis we did previous in previous parts we are going to use it so at lower wage levels at first wages go up you're going to see leisure to go down and hours of work to go up this is slightly above the reservation rate so wages are still low as wages go up, people are going to put in more hours. The labor supply curve is positive, the slope. So wages go up, hours of work goes up. You have positive relationship at first. Which effect is dominating, right? Wages went up, leisure went down. So you see substitution effect dominating income effect. Why? Wages went up, leisure is relatively more expensive. So people are going to increase their... Uh, Hours of work and cut down leisure, consume more. This is a substitution effect. Leisure is relatively more expensive, reduce it. At some point though, as wages keep increasing, as wages go up, leisure goes up and hours of work goes down. So let's say your wages are about like $10 or so, your reservation wages uh, $10. From 10 to it goes up to 15, you're going to work more. But at some point, if the hourly wage goes up to $500, I can work a few hours, 10 hours and make the same money. Okay. At some point, hours of work will decline as wage rate increases. So you're going to see a negative slope. So negative relationship, wages keep increasing, hours of work will go down. So we, that's why we have a backward bending labor supply curve, labor supply curve. Okay, so which effect dominates? In this case, income effect dominates. Wages go up, you feel richer. If you're rich, you consume more of everything. Again, substitution effect is working at the same time. However, income effect dominating. Okay, so then you have leisure going up, hours going down. And this is why we have backward bending labor supply curve. So backward bending labor supply curve, let's say your reservation wage is $10. You start supplying hours of work in the market. And first it's going to, your, so your substitution effect dominates here at the lower part, dominates. Here income effect dominates. You're richer, you're going to increase your leisure goes up, hours will go down up there. As wages, as wages go up, at first, hours will go up and then they will go down based on income and substitution effects. So let's say you were making $10, you, you don't want, that's your reservation wage. Wage rate goes up to $13, you're working 20 hours. Wage rate goes up to $20, you're working full time. So after a while, let's say wage rate goes up to $25. Now wages have been going up, right? And then it's it's high compared to your reservation wage. You may want to cut back down on hours. You're like, I'm making enough money. So here income effect is dominating in this region. In this region, substitution effect is dominating. I'll see you in part 14 where we study labor supply elasticity.